Hello everybody, what's up? I am the Sports Judge, welcome back. I hope your weekend is going well. Happy Saturday to you all. Celtics, Mavs. Now this right here is gonna be a very interesting series with the Dallas Mavs facing the Boston Celtics. We know Kyrie Irving and the Boston Celtics have some history. I think the Mavs have the personnel to beat the Celtics, but that will be a video for another day. Let's talk about Kyrie Irving. It was indebtable moments from Kyrie in these playoffs. He had sensational performances, the kind of showings that come associated with all time greatness. It changes the way we perceive him. A lot of us owe Kyrie an apology after what we just saw from him. And now he's going back to the NBA Finals for a second time in his career. And what makes this an even more compelling matchup is that he's facing his former team, the Boston Celtics. He is facing his former team. We have so many storylines for this year's NBA Finals. Kyrie Irving, who is playing out of his mind right now, is going back to Boston, where he's hated more than anywhere else. Boston fans, oh, they, man, they hate his guts so bad. This brother, he, he really is on another level right now, going back to a place where he will be, no doubt, serenaded with booze by the looming Boston crowd. The heckling he's about to get trying to take out the Celtics in the NBA Finals, it's going to be astounding. Kyrie playing the villain, this bad man going back to Boston where he broke his promise. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna be something to watch. And now he's a math, the, the team representing the West, looking to rob his former team of winning a chip. I mean, how beautiful is that? Every story needs a villain there's not a fan base that hates a player more than the celtics they despise kyrie let me tell you they hate this man so much that he wouldn't be able to show his face inside any restaurant local pub local bar or just about anywhere in boston and if not careful someone might put something in his food that is if he orders room service when you make a promise and break it just to leave for the Brooklyn Nets to team up with Kevin Durant, you're going to piss off. You're going to piss off an entire city like Boston, especially that fan base of all fan bases. So all the talk is about Kyrie Irving versus the Celtics, which has been made a big storyline. It's To me, it's the best storyline in this year's NBA Finals. Kyrie Irving... Oh, who, by the way, is on the verge of winning his second NBA championship, which is also a beautiful story, right? It's a story of redemption for him. It's a feel-good story when you consider the circumstances and everything he's gone through. Being suspended over his anti-Semitic posts because he tweeted something promoting an anti-Semitic film on social media, gets suspended, misses a lot of time, didn't seem fully committed to playing basketball, the whole COVID thing, not wanting to play, uh, refusing to get the vaccine, missing an abundance of games. Like, it did not end well in Brooklyn or Boston. It just didn't pan out. Because if you remember... He was believed to be this locker room cancer. They said he was a pro they said he was the problem. They said he was a drama queen. They said he was a problem child. They called him a headache, toxic. Obviously, Kyrie to Brooklyn was a recipe for disaster, and I kind of already knew how it would play out. Things went wrong for a Nets organization that became more dysfunctional than they already were. You know, and you just found yourself saying, damn, 
I mean, that's a bad situation, a really, really bad situation. You know, his public image, in a sense, was ruined. Um, you know, he had to win people's respect back. His actions and being a no-show changed the entire narrative surrounding him. And you look back at all that and say, wow, he's really come a long way since then. Kyrie has grown up a lot in the time he's left Boston and since going to Dallas where he has taken on the role as a finisher who comes to play uh, in, in closeout games. This is what it is now with Kyrie. And now you see a guy who has put the past behind, behind him. Look, I mishandled the situation in the past. I've made mistakes and I've learned from them. And this is how I feel. If you can take responsibility for your for your mistakes, own up to them, and move on from them, then I can respect you for that. I can respect that. I'm good with Kyrie. I, I think he's made, made it known that he's a changed man. He's come in as a totally different person, finally committed to the game he loves. You know, he was just distracted lost in a dark place for a brief moment. But then he suddenly finds himself again. Now Celtics fans, be be mindful. They're not going to give him uh, a, a, a chance to, to uh, redeem himself. They're not going to forgive him. Not when he returns, when he returned there the first time around and gave the fans the middle finger and essentially called Celtics fans jilted ex-lovers or whatever he said about them. It just wasn't a perfect situation in Boston or Brooklyn. I think the thing with Kyrie is that he made a lot of mistakes, yes, but I also feel like sometimes things aren't meant to be and just don't work out. We can we can look at it and say how much he's grown and how it's special what he's doing now. No question he has completely changed the narrative of his career because now he's on the basketball court. Take away the headlines that had nothing to do with basketball. Take away the non-related basketball stuff. Take away the, the unnecessary drama. Things that were preventing him from being on the court. What do you get when you take all of that away? What do you what do what do I get? I get a top five guard with some of the best handles. I get ultimately one of the best closers this game has to offer. I get a laser focused guard who can score and make plays and change the whole game with his ability to make things happen. I get a guy who is not distracted by the outside world and hap and, 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 and not worrying about what's happening off the basketball court. I owe him an apology for saying he ruined the Nets. I wrote an article titled Kyrie Irving ruined the Nets. I said it would never work in Dallas because I was looking at the fact that you would have two ball dominant guards in the backcourt together. Well, turns out I was wrong and, and turns out he's one of the reasons the Mavs got this far. He's one of the reasons Dallas is on the verge of being crowned champions. Kyrie, I will embrace. Scores the ball. High efficiency jump shooter. A creator. A guy who is capable of taking over games when he needs to. I can say that about him because the best ability is availability. And when he's on the court, man, we, when he's on the court, we can see how gifted and talented of a player he truly is. My, posi my position now is that he might be the best guard in the league now that he's been on the court and performing at an elite level. Uh, you know, he might be the best out there. You know, we all know this when he's, when he's, capable of performing at an elite level. He has shown what he can do when he's locked in. And man, it's scary, real scary what this brother 
can do when he's focused. And with his presence on the floor, I think he's been a leader on the court. And the Dallas Mavs have won because of him. I think Kyrie has been the perfect complement to Luka. And the backcourt tandem has been special, especially in these playoffs. If Kyrie gets his second ring playing against Boston, imagine that. If he gets his second ring playing against Boston, this would set off Boston, okay? Man, they're going they're they're going to go absolutely bonkers if that happens. Kyrie is back in the NBA Finals playing against his former team, the Boston Celtics. Mass versus Celtics. What a series it will be. Thanks for watching everyone. Really appreciate the love and support. I'm getting out of here now. We'll talk very soon. Thanks for watching.